Hello, hello everyone. Today I'm gonna to be featuring, well, a ship that's kind of been the bane of my existence lately, and that is the Lepanto, the tier 9 Italian battleship. Now, as some of those who watch my stream are probably well aware, I'm not really a big fan of these Italian battleships. In fact, I felt like this entire line has been an absolute struggle. Basically from tier 5 onwards, it's just felt awful. I thought the Calacciolo, uh, the tier 7, was pretty okay, but everything else in the line has just been, well, just an awful, awful grind, to put it lightly. The biggest issue really is, uh, this is clearly a line that was designed with Deadeye in mind, and Wargaming removed that Deadeye and decided to not compensate the ship in any way whatsoever. I turn out to get all my turrets on the DD and in return I eat a huge chunk from the Musashi. Musashi, sorry, and uh, not exactly very impressed by my Fletcher at this point. My Fletcher decides to smoke up against the mass in the cap and decides to not spot anything either. For those not aware, a Fletcher of course outspots, outguns and has more health than a mass by a significant margin so he could basically just sail up and kill him. In fact the only way the Fletcher can possibly lose this fight against the mass is by parking in a smoke stationary and being torpedoed or hydroed by the mass and killed in such a way. So this Fletcher is right now doing his utmost to lose a battle that is heavily in his favor. So please try to avoid playing like that. I have AP loaded, Musashi is giving me a broadside, the range is of course another huge weakness, 18 kilometers of range, and the other issue is naturally the penetration, as you can see two shatters on the broadside Musashi at 18 kilometers. These guns are 380s and, well to call them underwhelming is to put it very very lightly. Now I'm pinging the Fletcher hoping he would please go up and spot this destroyer because well, we have two cruisers and me ready to help him out to kill him. But the Fletcher is content to just sit stationary in the smoke and watch the going of the world. I played this game earlier today, Sunday, so it's obviously full weekend gameplay in action. And, well, the gameplay kind of shows, to put it quite lightly. The smoke, the so-called Italian gimmick of the smoke, um, it's mostly only really useful for running away and the very occasional niche usage of getting your secondaries in on targets or potentially looking for a better shot. Overall though, the smoke, which is so fantastic and so useful on the Italian cruisers, does feel kind of wasted on the Italian battleships simply because the huge smoke firing penalty means that anytime you smoke up you basically um, surrender any chance to use your guns because if you're shooting and smoking then you're kind of wasting the point of the smoke to begin with. So, I haven't really been too impressed with that either. My Fletcher is still sitting in the smoke, willing to wait out the very, very last puff. Doesn't want to contest, doesn't want to spot this mass, doesn't just want to kill him, or help us kill him in this case. So, we're just going to have to wait for him to understand that, yes, he can in fact just go up and kill this mass quite easily and uh, be done with it. Luckily, the mass, instead of running away and being an annoyance, has decided with 4,500 health to rush in and engage the Fletcher in a gunfight. I don't know why, but this obviously favors us greatly and I instantly go for him, especially with sap loaded. Another issue really I, I, I have with the Lepanto is that it is it really struggles to deal with destroyers. In fact, Italian battleships in general just struggle to deal with destroyers. I, I highly disagree with Wargaming's decision to make it so that battleship sap is limited to 10% damage on destroyers. It doesn't need to be full damage, that would be like the way Italian cruisers have, but having it limited to 10% is so incredibly underwhelming, it could easily be 50% so that there would actually be a significant benefit to switching from AP to SAP. But right now, when your AP and your SAP alpha is roughly similar, the difference between shooting AP and shooting SAP at the destroyer is basically not there. You gain about 50 damage per shell, roughly. So, and SAP, of course, doesn't break any modules, so you can't break torp tubes, you can't break engines, it doesn't start any fires. Uh, it, it makes you, you, you really, really lack tools against destroyers, and that's really, really been the bane of me in many of these games with these Italian battleships, is you see a destroyer, you shoot him, and you do, you hit four pens and you do like 5,000 damage, you don't break any modules, you don't start any fires, and he sails away, or alternatively, he just rushes you and kills you, because that can also happen, because the secondaries are so very underwhelming. In fact, 
Zap is something that's, while so strong on the cruisers, on the battleships, I've found it to be feel mostly really like a weakness. Uh, most of the damage I get with Zap is really on these big broadside targets, but oftentimes when I get these big Zap volleys in, I'm just thinking, well, what if that had just been AP? Uh, I would probably have done 12,000 with AP on a full broadside battleship as well. So the actual benefit that I'm gaining from Zap, the trade-off in general, has seemed so underwhelming in this Italian BBS. Um, you you don't have any HE in return, you have SAP, you have the smoke gimmick in return for, I don't know, I guess overall survivability, your turtle bike isn't very good, and um, your tankiness is only really effective if you're sitting no zim. So this game, of course, I'm just trying to utilize our spotting. We have a cap advantage. They have a lot of, they have two battleships and a cruiser sitting in the back way outside the cap. In fact, if you look at my position, I'm right next to the cap. They're miles away from the cap. This is the kind of position where there's no reason to push in. Because we don't know what's going on at sea. We don't know if someone is sneaking up. And if the enemy team starts pushing through the A cap, I'm in a position where I can potentially turn my guns around and I can help them. So I actually really like this position. I think like this is a this is a strong position to support my team in. I don't need to be pushing in. In fact, pushing in to two tier nine battleships might possibly just get me killed because I'm really the only anchor on this flank. We got two cruisers and a destroyer who so far has shown some rather questionable performances. In fact, that Fletcher is now down to 9,000 health. I'm not sure how that has happened. Uh, I think he's like shooting and leaving his smoke and then being killed by the Eendracht. There is no hydro here. There is no radar here. I think he's just open water gunboating for some reason, just throwing away his entire health pool. So him dying is obviously going to become a big issue because we're both my Ibuki and Drake, well, they're playing very, very safe. They're hiding behind an island. They're hiding very far back. And... Fletcher vision is something that we've been relying on for a fair bit. The Fletcher does survive with, well, 2,000 health. There were some shells coming in from the right, you saw that? Some curious shells coming in from the right, so I'm, I'm suspecting that the Akatsuki might actually have shown up on this flank. And this is my cue to start moving and try to see if I can support. There's in fact a smoke on the right, so the Akatsuki has arrived. So I'm going to try to move in and see if I can potentially support my Fletcher here. Fletcher, however, has decided to rush in towards the Akatsuki, which is an interesting choice, to put it lightly. And he actually manages to eat some of the torpedoes, so he dies to the tier 7 destroyer. At this point, I have two choices. I can run away, and we'll probably lose the cap, and we'll be forced on the defensive. And if we lose the A flank, we end up being crossfired in our spawn. Or alternatively, I can just go for it. And I decide, you know what, we have to go for it. I still have four heals, I got plenty of health. Uh, you gotta kind of find a situation when you need to push in. Earlier, I didn't feel there was a need, but our, our eyes on the field, the Fletcher just died. And I don't have much faith in the Ibuki and Draken locking down this cap, so... I decide to see if I can maybe rush down this Akatsuki, catch him off guard, because he's probably not expecting me to charge down straight at him. So the Akatsuki actually enters the camp, and that's exactly what I was hoping for, and I do get vision of him, I shoot right at his flight broadside, and because we're playing an Italian battleship, <laughs> we do zero damage. Which is uh, very impressive, of course. Uh, my secondaries start wailing on him. I note that we, we see a fair bit of secondaries hitting him, but not actually doing any damage. That's because, that's because the secondaries on his ship are so underwhelmingly garbage that they only penetrate 15 millimeters of plating. Your 100 mi 90 millimeter guns, that is. And an Akatsuki, a tier 7 destroyer, actually has 16 millimeters of armor. So the vast majority of my secondaries are actually shattering. Note that my Drake is happily shooting the Musashi in the background. And in fact, you might see shells coming in from the right, flying uh, past the Akatsuki and also shooting the Musashi. Uh, and that is in fact, you see those shells going flying there. You're about to see them, you see those arcing down on the Musashi. Uh, both the cruisers behind me were, of course, shooting the Masashi instead of helping me with the destroyer. But, I mean, it is weakened World Warship, so you expect the worst. I do manage to secure the kill, though. I do manage to pick him up with some luck of uh, the 152mm secondaries actually getting some hits in and just landing all the sap shells on the target. Now, however, I'm stuck against three opponents who are all targeting me, and my Drake is running for his life. I'm not entirely sure why, considering I am the priority target here, and my ebook is really far away. I'm not really sure about that either. I do manage to pick up the Endracht as well. So now I'm just up against two tier 9 BBs. I ping both my cruisers like, hello, like, please don't run away, just like, I'm gonna be the priority target, please help me out. 
It turns out Lepanto is going around the left side and a Musashi around the right. So this is when I decide I could ground, but if you the problem is if you try to go around either side here, you're going to end up giving full broadside to the other battleship. And there are two tier 9 battleships. One is much stronger than me, the Musashi, and the other is a Lepanto. Basically the same ship I have. So I decide to just start full reversing and try to maintain angling against both of them. I have two cruisers in the back. Ideally, two cruisers pouring down shells should eventually rack up some damage. I go for the Snow Citadel weakness on the Musashi, but the dispersion, being what it is, of course, only allows one shell at 3.5 kilometers to go where I wanted it to go. The rest, God knows where they went. The Italian battleship dispersion is a mystery, to put it lightly. However, I am trying to keep both secondary shooting on both targets. I wait a second for the guns to start reloading and I pop my smoke. This actually allows me to go dark and pop a heal. And this is really important because proximity spotting is two kilometers. So as long as I stay more than two kilometers away from the Lepanto, I will be able to maintain full darkness here, which means my secondaries get to farm both sides. It's not exactly impressive damage, uh, in fact I can show you the numbers later, the damage the secondaries are actually doing is basically zero, they can't pen any part of their ships, but I do start the occasional fire, which, which adds up. I tried to break the turrets on the Lepanto so it doesn't kill my Ibuki, who for some reason has decided, instead of hiding in the back and just farming these ships, he's gonna rush into them and die. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ask me why he thought that was a good idea, but he thought that was a good idea. So, I just keep letting my secondaries farm the Musashi. I, in fact, I select him as a priority target because I want my secondaries to try to finish him off with fires while I hold my guns for the Lepanto. I'm still full reversing here, and at the very last moment, I actually am going to stop full reversing and I'm going to accelerate to catch him off guard with the sudden change of angle. And in fact, here is the part, I'm lining it up, and you see that I go full speed forward, and the Lepanto suddenly gets caught off guard because I have enough angle to score the penetrations on him. And while my secondaries burn down the Masashi, I also manage to kill off the Lepanto, giving me a double strike and a Kraken. So, secondary is actually getting a surprising amount of value there because I got eight fires. God forbid this does not mean you should build secondary builds on the Lepanto. Please don't do it. The secondaries are absolute junk. Just because I did that with secondaries doesn't mean the secondaries are good. That was just good positioning and utilizing the tools that I had, not something you should be building around. A full HP Turpitz pops up and I'm thinking, you know what, I just go nose in and my Drake will burn him to death, but <laughs> my Drake... Uh, well, I land a good volley on him with the AP, I score Confederate and High Caliber, but my Drake has... I do not know why, but he has decided to sail in around the island on C9 and he's put an island between himself and the Turpits, so he can't even actually shoot him and help me in any possible way. So what I thought was a 2 versus 1 is actually now a, <laughs> a 1 versus 1 against this Turpits. Uh, at this point, we're just going for those meaty superstructure pens, and I'm wondering what in God's name this Drake is doing. And obviously the Turpitz is looking to push in and brawl, he wants to torpedo me, so we're not going to allow him to do that. We just stop and we start reversing, trying to maintain enough angling that he doesn't get the freest of shots in. And hopefully that maybe my secondaries can do some more magic with the fire starting, and we're just going to be reversing away and trying to create distance between between him and me. I, s I have a smoke coming up in about 40. I got a fair few tools. As long as I maintain distance, I got a fair few tools to, to play with. Uh, I got damage con in 10 seconds. I got smoke in 30. So we're just going to be shooting his superstructure and kiting away from this guy as he tries to close the distance. My Drake is finally, finally getting into a position where he can support me with some firepower. And my team has managed to win the other flank. So this guy is very much the last threat they have. I shoot every reload. My With AR I have about 27 second reload at this point. Not exactly the most impressive of damage, but um, it is steadily chipping him down. And because, well, because he's got that huge German superstructure, there's plenty to farm. He turns sideways, and you saw that the priority target actually went to a zero. Uh, it, it was one, and then it went to a zero, so I know that this guy just dropped his torpedoes. So I just turn and use all my guns and decide to go for the full volley on his broadside. To try to see if I can pick him off the dispersion once again. Half the shells went into the water, as seems to be the Italian standard, but I do manage to pick off the kill, and this game ends in a victory. And winning games with the Lepanto, especially on the weekend, <laughs> it has been it has been a struggle and a half. 
Uh, Confederate, uh, Double Strike, Close Quarters, what is it, Expert, Dreadnought, Kraken, and High Caliber. This would be a lot of nice flags for these nice achievements if, of course, Wargaming would actually give us some nice flags for our achievements instead of being so damn cheap that they even steal the flags from some of the most satisfying things in the game, which is uh, achievements after playing well. So, sadly, no, no spicy flags from this one. Six kills, though. One Citadel, honestly, you don't expect too many Citadels with the Lepanto Dispersion. Team score wise, uh, not as much team score as I would have hoped, only 2.3k uh, killed half the team, but of course I was top tier and when you're killing lower tier ships you don't get as much XP as you normally would. So the base XP not quite that impressive, but of course quite a significant carry regardless. Detailed report wise, well this is of course where it gets quite amusing. Um, sap damage 73k, AP damage about 100k, and then we get to the secondary battery. 1130 shells fired, 301 shells that actually hit the target, and total secondary damage, drum roll, 5600 with 300 shells. These secondaries are absolute garbage. They are the worst possible junk out there, so please, please do not build secondary uh, secondary build Italian battleships. These 90mm guns are just such a joke that they, they literally don't do anything. The best chance you have is starting fires, which the 9 fires on the 2 different BBs or 3 different BBs ended up netting a whole 34,000 fire damage. Really not worth investing points in those. Ultimately though, 2.1 million potential and about 125,000 damage received. This was an example of, well, seizing the moment or seizing an opportunity to push in just to get rid of the Akatsuki because, well, our Fletcher managed to kind of donate his ship to the enemy. And more than that, the constant maintaining of angling when fighting other battleships. Because you gotta keep in mind, Lepanto is only tanking nose in. Stern in, you got a lot of superstructure, a vulnerable box in the back, and broadside, you got an overmatchable citadel to deal with. Let me show you guys my recommended build on the ship. It won't make the ship much better, but it will make it a bit more tolerable to grind through. Right, as usual, let me start with the equipment. Uh, turret survival. You kind of need it. The second one seems to get knocked out a fair bit. Additional tankiness, better dispersion. Oh, Jesus, do you need better dispersion in this thing. Additional tankiness, I feel like you can also go propulsion mod, but personally, I just prefer the damage control system mod. I, I run it on most nosing tanky battleships that I play. Concealment and faster reload on the main guns. I think range is actually a very valid option because the, the default range, it is just garbage. 18.1 km when you're facing tier 10 ships. Like half the cruisers that you face have better range than you do. So running range mode is absolutely an option to do. But I just get so frustrated by the guns already having a brutal 32.6 second reload with the reload mod that having the default reload i think of what 37 seconds is just it's just too painful for me to deal with regardless neither option is going to make you happy and that kind of sums up the gaming experience when it comes to the italian bbs you settle for compromises because nothing you really do is going to be that enjoyable if you have sansonetti he's of course the best possible captain to run uh, first captain build is or point is gun feeder into priority target into adrenaline rush at which point I run fire prevention and then I built concealment expert and when I, once I got an 18 point captain I built uh, emergency repair expert if I had extra points I would get um, greased gears and probably the last point in the preventive maintenance but as this is a new line this was voted for by my viewers so i am grinding this from scratch with a completely new captain this is what we're stuck with lepanto is well we have 106,000 xp we still got some ways to go for the tier 10 but so far i basically hated this entire line <laughs> like to put it very lightly i've hated this entire line uh, I, I've, my performance has been pretty pretty good in it across the board. I maintained a pretty good win rate, I think, in these Italian BBs. But it, it has just felt like such an absolute, absolutely ridiculous struggle. I think Lepanto, oh, not that good. We're 14 games, 57, 137,000 average. Uh, I think we did better in uh, the Tier 8, the Veneto. We played 18 games, 83% win rate. 
and then we played Caracciolo, 14 games, 71% win rate. Uh, so the win rate has been okay, I feel, across the board on these Italians, but I have not been enjoying myself. I feel like, so far, this has felt like probably one of the worst battleship lines in the game. This, shit, this entire line was clearly designed with Dead Eye in mind, Wargaming removed the die, and I didn't feel like compensating the line in any way. Maybe my opinion will change once, once I reach the tier 10. Maybe the tier 10 is the promised land, but I really have my doubts because all the issues that I have so far, which is the dispersion and the kind of uselessness of the smoke gimmick and uh, just sap not really being uh, the, the kind of the thing I was hoping for. Half the time, I'm just wishing I had H instead. Um, We'll see. Maybe my opinion will change, but so far, yikes. I'll play the IGN line any any day of the week over this line. Anyways, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed my commentary. I might feature another one on the Lepanta because honestly, <laughs> every game in this, in this ship really feels like a battle when it comes to getting a win. Uh, but as always, if you enjoyed the content, please do feel to leave me a sub and a like. Uh, I do appreciate the support as always. I will talk to you guys next time. Have a great rest of the evening.